Welcome to RC Cincy. Today we have the world's smallest helicopter. So we were at Cracker Barrel looking at some stuff and I came across this uh, a little bit pricey to be honest with you. I think it was like $24.99 but I was thinking I had the world's smallest drone on the channel. I had the world's smallest radio control car on the channel why not have the world's smallest radio controlled helicopter on the channel so 24 bucks um so it says it's just ages eight and up i'm sure a little kid could fly this real flying helicopter um just a bit some little basic information helicopter with battery meaning it has a rechargeable small battery in it it will recharge probably off the remote just by looking at it it's an ir remote control so you're not going to be able to fly this outside due to the light from the sun's gonna interfere or have it fly off wonky or crazy on you. Uh, IR remote control, uh, storage case and charger. You have a 30 foot range, but I'd definitely stay within that. Uh, four directional navigation and two programmable channels, probably like A and B or something like that. Sometimes it has A, B and C. Um, what else? On the back side, it just talks about the uh, main rotors, uh, the little stabilizer bar, um, you know, uh, tail, uh, rotor, um, charging port and off and on switch, of course. Uh, you're also going to need, where does it say? I think it's four AA batteries. Yep. Four AA batteries. It recommends alkaline batteries. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. So I think that's pretty much everything on the package. It was produced 6, 6, 2022. So it's, uh, June 6, 2022, so it hasn't been sitting around forever. Of course, it's made in China. Uh, the company is uh, Westmaster Minister Inc. Westminster Inc. Uh, it's from Atlanta, Georgia. I guess that a distributor buys them and sells them. World's smallest, so that's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and get a knife and open this up. Uh, you are going to need a screwdriver, I would imagine, to access the batteries. And, of course... Four double A's. So let's go ahead and open this up. Am I cutting the cardboard or not? This thing's real sharp. You gotta be careful with it. it Doesn't have a neat little flick on it. I love it. So let's open this up. Yeah, it's a tough little bugger. It's nice and tight. Oh. I don't want to tear this box. I don't know if it matters, but. Oh, yeah, it's got the... Oh, so these are just to keep it in place. I thought there was something in there, but there's nothing in there. What else we got in here? Oh, let's just do this. There we go. And, of course, the good old trusty manual. Let's throw these in here and just set this up, yeah, for display. Boom. Whatever. Um, we have to controller and the helicopter of course just a little user guide talks about the off and on switch charging port the leds the i the ir emitter off and on switch throttle level steering lever charging connector your trim functions of course your channel selector pretty basic stuff which talks about charging how it flies and everything we're gonna need four AA batteries there is a screw there you have to access and um Symptoms, troubleshooting on the back of there. That'll help out if you have any issues. Uh, let's say symptoms properly. Propeller won't move. Sudden stop or rapid descent. Helicopter does not respond. Just all those. So that's kind of nice to have a little troubleshooting thing guide on there. That's not bad. Set that down. And then the controller. So it's kind of a 
It's the big K slash controller. I've seen these before with drones as well. Let's open this up. Oh, there's a cute little helicopter. It is tiny. So this is the controller. Just kind of locks in place. Are these thumbsticks? Oh yeah, they are. That's kind of neat. So these are just the thumbstick extensions. It's going to be kind of hard to fly with those shorties right there. So you're just going to pop these in. You're going to need to pop this in to be able to use that. That's way too short to use, right? You just got to turn it to where it lines up. You got to jam it on there. You're going to want to pop them off. Of course, one goes to center. And then this is your throttle management, which works just fine. Three little IR uh, things, channel A and B. And of course, the off and on switch. So you, by just programming it, I forget how you do it, but I'm just gonna leave it on A. If you have more than one, you're gonna need to do that. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Charger connector, I mean, let's see this connector. Yep, I have one of these. So I actually have one of these that runs off of USB. So if I don't wanna charge off the controller, I don't have to. Some of them do come with that. And then you're gonna need a Phillips to access the uh, battery. So I just have my $10 Harbor Freight electric screwdriver. It's a little three volt. I love these things because there are just enough power to remove basic small little screws, especially for small stuff like this, RC stuff. Uh, like I used it to remove the wheels um, off of the, um, can't think, off of the Axial SCX24. So they're just kind of nicey precision for laptops as well. I just think got a high voltage. So you gotta worry about stripping and tearing screws up and over tightening them with it. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna do the. These are all brand new batteries, just the last of the Duracells, last one of this, and the last one of the, uh, uh, of course, all Alkaline uh, Kroger brand. These are all Alkaline batteries. That's all I use. I don't use the nickel, the nickel cadmium batteries because those are fine for like clocks and stuff, like low power draw, but anything else, they just do not perform well. So let's put this door on. Looks like it would stay on even if you didn't put the screw in, but I'm just going to put the screw in for now. Because it came that way, I don't want to lose it. I'll end up losing that screw. I'm almost positive. There is a light. I don't know why I quit working. If I nudged it or if the battery's too low, the light won't work. Because I've had these batteries in here for a little while now. But watch. That screwdriver is a little bit small, but it won't over tighten it. Like, see? It's about 100 RPM, so it won't really strip plastic. You'd have to force it and try, obviously. I and mean, then of course, without the battery working, you can also unscrew and use it just like a regular screwdriver. So that's kind of cool. I love that thing. Um, so there's that. We did charge up, uh, or no, the, the helicopter needs to be charged up um, before you fly it. It's gonna come with the charge from the factory because they don't want this battery to be dead. Um, you can see the little off and on switch right there and see that little off and on switch it's very small there is the the receiver and like that picks up the light that little indicator right there i'll just leave it as is off and on uh led there's the port to the charger there's a tiny little motor there looks like it's got two motors so it's got one turning on this side another one over here turning on that side so both motors are going to help both blades turn That's really nice. So it uses the centrifugal force to straighten up and turn the blades. Of course, the little stabilizer up here, or that, I forget what it's called, um, fly bar. I think that's called a fly bar, but this is a coaxial helicopter. My least favorite, but being world's smallest kind of droopy to it. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put this bad boy on the charger. So to charge it, you have to turn this on. And then when you plug it, this light will flash. So make sure you line it up correctly. There's a little notch there. See how it's going red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green. It's charging. It's going to go solid when it's done. It's going to change from what it's doing now. So now it's charging. I don't know how long it's going to charge depending on how full this battery was. It should be pretty darn full. Definitely in a storage mode. Now... Before we finish charging that really quickly, I'm curious what size battery is in this. So let's see. Looks like we got these posts that you can pop out. It's just one screw. Let's see what battery. I'm really curious um, to see. 
I love this little, and it is magnetic. And for 10 bucks. So let's go ahead and undo each side. See what happens here. Ah, uh, little baby battery. <laughs> could you put a connector? A connector is going to be kind of heavy, but you could technically put a connector on there, I guess. But what battery is this? 3.7 volts, 75 milliamps. So it's a little baby battery. That's so cute. <laughs> Love it. So now, to get it in, to do it the same way, kind of stick it in there in an the angle, just like so. Uh, kind of tuck some of those wires. You have to do a little bit of finagling to get it back in there. Take your time. Don't tell me it's that easy. Well, that never usually works out like that. Then, of course, you're going to need the screw. Be very careful. You could easily... I mean, when it flies, it's so lightweight. When it wrecks, it shouldn't break the props or anything. It didn't come with any spares or nothing. But this should be pretty hard. You have to have a pretty hard, gnarly wreck to break it. See that? How it just snugs it up for you perfectly. Man, I love that. So what we're going to do... You can see the off and on switch, the little board right there, the little controller it has stabilization, of course. Seems like it would land pretty nicely on the skids. Yeah, that might fly okay. You never know. Um, so what we'll do is we'll charge it and we'll come right back and we'll fly this thing. Okay, so we're in the living room. I'm starting to, I didn't have very many coaxial helicopters. So the way I figure is once you get elevation, what it wants to do is it's just so it wants to kind of go forward, and what you're doing is just turning. So as it's going up, it's kind of going forward. Once it kind of figures out its elevation, it always goes forward. So just steer it. So you can go like in a circle this way, or in a circle that way, you're always moving. Get her, Frank. Fight her face off. Anyway, these fools, they've been doing their channel stuff, so we gotta ignore them, they're slap happy. So let's see if we can fly uh, the, the helicopter. So throttle management, important. And then you go to the left. See, I'm gonna turn around this way. I'm gonna come back this way. Do a little more throttle to climb. It can fly. You're gonna need at least this much room. I'd recommend maybe more. Go forward towards you. Hover a little bit, go forward. Turn again. It slowly likes to go forward. Once you kind of get elevation right, it goes forward. See, if you hold it at that, it goes forward. See, it doesn't go forward until it has the right elevation. For a second it doesn't constantly go forward it kind of like pauses which i like which allows you to turn see that and it's very controllable i had such a hard time in my room of course it was smaller i'm just whipping around let's go to the uh left now now of course you can trim it move i'm gonna turn around go this way I, this is fun Go a little lower. Now watch the ceiling fan. So you can change how fast it. See, this is full left. This is full right. Oh, right gets or yeah, right. Is it right? I don't know. This is fun. <laughs> I'm very disoriented. <laughs> so full left. So wait, does it turn left when you give it right? I'm very confused. Can you tell me? It's where I'm turning to the right. I'm yeah, turning to the right. Yeah. Durr. So look, I'm going to go faster and whip right. Oh, this is a lot of fun. Look how fast I'm doing. I'm doing a tornado. See that? TV. See that? I'm not going to into the TV. This is so much fun. This is completely controllable. I, I literally thought this was a piece of crap. And I'm starting to realize how to fly it. Well, actually, it wasn't that bad. I might have to buy like a bigger, nicer one, honey. Yeah. Because I always stayed away from coax. I always did the like fly bar list or fly bar or uh, with uh, collective pitch ones. Of course, I couldn't do flips or rolls. I could only hover and fly around a little bit and whip around. But I tell you what, this is a little whipper. She's got pep in it. Now, this is 75 milliamps, so I don't know how long this is going to last. I did wreck a few times in there, and then you kind of look at the filming on this video. So maybe I can look at it and kind of give you an estimate. It didn't say an estimate. It may say in the manual. So I didn't read the entire manual, of course. It's all about throttle management. I've been holding it pretty much at this. Look, I'm using one hand to fly this. Oh, you got to manage the throttle. 
kill it. If you feel like you're going to wreck at that point, always kill the blades. Because if they're spinning when you wreck and they hit with the force, that's how these get damaged. So you can see I've wrecked it four or five times into that wall in my room. <laughs> into the picture of us, honey. Like hard. And it didn't care. Didn't even leave a mark on it. So the light's not flashing it. I could guarantee you this light's going to flash when the battery's low. So I'm going to do one more takeoff. I'm going to do a takeoff from the ground because that's, I feel like, it's more challenging. So face it because it's going to want to go forward, so don't face it towards the wall and just hit it. Can't be scared. And then once you get it up, you just got to manage the throttle. See that? Now complete control of it. Because <laughs> I hate <can't> <laughs> You like it, honey? Yeah. This is awesome. I need to get Bradley to fly one of these because it's really two channels. You have throttle and steering. That's it. And then you can get two of these and fly together in channel, and uh, uh, you can program channel A and channel B. So when you're binding it, you just put A and then bind it, giving it throttle, which will connect to A. And then you do the other one with channel B and you can fly two of them. Uh, remember this being IR, uh, if you're outside in the sunlight, really bright sun, maybe on a cloudy day you might be able to get away with it. Maybe not. You gotta watch those good old UV rays and light. Um, but yeah. This thing's a whipper. <laughs> I'm whipping the crap out of it. So it, I like that. It's not continuous forward. If you left the throttle, it kind of stabilizes. Whoops. Whip. I like that it's not too loud. Yeah, it's not crazy. Like, so it like kind of goes forward, the, lets off, goes forward, fireplace. lets off. See, it goes forward, lets off, goes forward, lets off. So it kind of lets you manage it kind of. So the more steady you can keep the throttle, the better it goes forward. So you can go pretty fast forward depending on how you, you know what I mean? Your flying style, like, see, I feel like to this side, it's got more trim to this side, so you can actually adjust that. If it's got too much left or right, and when you restart, it resets your trim. So I might do that, because it might not have a stronger left or right. So let me go ahead and land. Uh, just watch where you land on carpet. It'll just bounce up something harder. It still may bounce on the skis. So let me quickly turn it off really quickly. So there's a tiny, tiny little switch. You're going to hit that off. It's just kind of hard. I have no nail. Or is it this way? There we go. That's that way. And then you're going to want to kill this. So remember, you're going to want to hit. You're going to want to keep put it in the channel first before you hit anything. Put it in the channel. You're going to turn on this. It's just hard to see. Sorry. You're going to see it's slow flashing looking for signal. You're going to want to land on flat ground. Right? You can see it's searching. And then you're going to want to turn this on. Go up, down. Oh, I took too long. That's another thing is, or you might want to do the radio first. So just make sure you have your channel you want. Because I feel like you have a timeline. So to it stabilizes and gets flat around. Oh, we're connected. That's why it's already on channel A. It was already bound on channel A. So there's that. I just hesitated. So this should be zeroed out, hopefully. I don't think it has memory. Uh, I don't think so, at least. So let me see how much the left and right is. So let me go ahead and take off. So here is right. Oh yeah. This one always been peppy. Let's see if left's like that. Now that the trim isn't all to one side. Oh yeah. <laughs> left is, I, I feel like you go more forward left than you do right. Notice that like I'm still going forward. See, it kind of wants to turn around. Woo! Quick turn around. Uh oh, is it flashing dead? Nope. You can feel, you can feel the battery is getting fatigued a little bit. You can definitely tell. Let me take off the, off of the tap, oh, not tablet, but the laptop. The laptop. Here we go. <laughs> I like this thing, honey. You can see the lights getting dim. See, I'm giving it full throttle. It's not taking off. There we oh, go. It's see that? Yep. You seeing it flash? Yep. So when you're giving it throttle, it's gonna flash. See that light? It died. <laughs> it's dead. So there you have it, guys. What what time were we at? Um, eight minutes. 
So I probably flew, what, six minutes of that? Talked for a couple, maybe five minutes. Let's say five. And I flew for another three or four in there. So it's just going to vary on how hard you're, if you're giving it full throttle the whole time, if you're gunning it. Uh, but this gave me quite a bit of a range. And the cool part is I could just go, boop, get out my little wire, leave the controller on, turn off the helicopter, and just simply find the port, line up the notch. Man, unless eyesight is bad, honey. <laughs> Once you plug it up, turn it off, turn it back on. See that little flashing green light flickering? Make sure this is off all the way. Now, you don't want to kill this battery all the way either. There we go. I never turn the helicopter off. That's why I wouldn't charge. See how, see how it's green with a flashing red light? That's charge mode. That is off. See when I turn the helicopter on? The light's on, and that's flashing red. Turn the helicopter off. That's charging. So keep this charged. Don't let the bat don't put it away with a really dead battery like that. If you forget about it, let's say for I don't know, a month or two, the battery will die and it won't take a charge again. So and that being 3.7 volt, it's not a really high powered six cell that's gonna expand and burst. These can expand with going too low and then quickly going too high. So it's not even a bad idea. Feels a little warm. It's not even a bad idea to let it cool off for like three or four minutes and then plug it up and charge it. But it, uh, it doesn't feel that warm to me. If you do it multiple times a session, you may have an issue. So I would just definitely let it rest a minute or two, literally a couple minutes, plug it up, let it charge, store it charged, fly it, let it rest a couple minutes, charge it, and then put it up in its case. Don't forget the sticks come off and they stick on right here. I should, like I showed you guys in the unboxing. So they just literally boop, pop right off, stick right here. And I think you can charge the helicopter while it's charging, I think. Let me see if it'll fit while it's charging. Because I usually have this door open while it's charging. But I'm pretty sure you have enough room if the if the lid will close. So these little things should pop onto there. Let me see if, it, if it'll... It won't because it lays in there like that and the wire is not long enough. So, whoops, did I mess that up? There we go, now it's flashing. You can see how it's going red, green, red, green. So let that be, let that go ahead and charge. I would just let it rest like that. Don't pull on that wire too hard. And there you have it, you can see it's charging nice and bright. So it, it is going to charge off these batteries. If you have that little cool connector like I do from like another cheap like air hogs or something like that, you can charge that way as well. So that's pretty much it for this one. To um, be honest with you, I had fun flying it. That's what really matters. Yeah, it's 23 bucks, but it's the world's smallest little coaxial helicopter. It's really cool. It is fun. It's basic uh, flying, just two channel. And then of course you get the more advanced helicopters like three channel coaxial. I think they go up to three channel. And then you could then you could finally get a four channel fly barless or a barless one and go from there. So not a bad starting point. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.